In this session, we're going to take a look at working with Corel's Pointalyzer Docker in Corel Draw X8. Now, this is a paid add-on from Corel. If you want to get it, you can go to your Macro Manager. You can also get to that through Tools, Macros, and Macro Manager here. And if you click on Get More, you'll get a pop-up, and if you scroll down, you'll see Pointalyzer. For patterns and pointillism by using vectors and you can purchase that for just $19.99 go ahead and go back to that docker since I've got that and there's a couple of things I want to get into before we get into the tutorial about using the pointillizer docker itself let me create a rectangle here and I'm going to give this a interactive fill so I'll come over here to my interactive fill tool left click drag down and release right there with a nice gradient. I've got some settings set up here and you can experiment with these. You can change the size, the scale, the density, so forth and so on. Go ahead and click on apply and we'll let that process. You'll see that because I'm working with a fountain I'm going to get a gradient from the pointalyzer. And that's really not the effect that I'm going to want to have when I'm trying to create halftone effects as you can see there. Now if I hit control Z to undo that and I go ahead and I just go ahead and fill this with a solid black and hit cancel here get my pick tool and make sure I have that selected fill that with a solid black I'll take the outline off come over here to my transparency tool left click hold down drag to right there and then go ahead and click on apply you'll see that I get a very different halftone type effect. So it really comes down to having the transparencies for me when I'm trying to create these halftone effects. And if we zoom in and take a look, we can see we've got a nice halftone effect there. Now, if I change my density and I'll hit Control Z, let's say I bring my density down to like four. Make sure I've got my object selected, click Apply, get a very different halftone effect as you can see there. I'll hit Control Z, bring this back up to say around, I'll bring it up to like 12. Click Apply, let that process. And I get a really nice halftone effect there. So the transparencies really are the key. You don't want to try and use these with fountain fills because it's going to try and bring in the grays and things like that. But if you just got transparency, it applies and it gives you these really nice halftone looks and effects in vector, mind you. So now that we understand that, I'm going to go ahead and delete this by hitting my delete key. I'll grab my text logo here, move it over here, and we'll go to work on this. We'll start to create our design and do some work with Pointalyzer. I'll zoom in here, and the first thing I want to do is I want to create my racing flags. I'll do that very easily by coming over here to the graph paper tool, and I've already set this to 8.8 8 by 5. And what I'll do is I'll zoom out a little bit and I'll just create what I'd like for the flag. Once that's set up, I'm going to go to my interactive fill tool and I'm going to change that fill to a black. I'll push my mouse wheel forward, zoom in here, and I'll just start filling the squares that I want to have as black with black using the smart fill tool. Quick and easy here. Really fast NASCAR or racing type flag setup. Now I'll go to my color for the interactive fill tool again, and this time I'll change that to a white. And we'll come in and we'll click in all these white squares that we want to have filled with white. And just left clicking here, filling these. And there we've got everything all set up. I'll go back to my pick tool. I'll hold down the Alt key and I'll click. I'll get that grass paper and I'll go ahead and hit the delete key on my keyboard. I'll remove that. Lasso, select all of these, come up here and group everything. Come over here to my design and I'll come over here to my interactive tools and I'll come down to the envelope. Go ahead and lasso, left click, hold down these two nodes here and I'll do the same for these here. Lasso, hit the delete key, remove those. Change this to a line. Come over here and left click on this and change that also to a line. Left click, 
and lasso these two nodes in the envelope, pull that down, you can see the effect that I'm getting. Might even pull that down a little bit more and bring it in here. And I could do something like bring this down a little bit more, and we want to click off and grab just this node, left click, pull that down. And I could actually bring this down a little bit, put some more shape in this. And do the same thing down here, just left click, then come over and get this handle, left click and pull down. Got a nice flag shape there. And if I want to, I can reshape that, make it a little bit smaller for the graphic, and we'll bring it up into here. I'm going to go ahead and left click, hold down, right click one time, duplicate that over here. I'll go ahead and flip that. I can bring that over here. Left click, change that, grab this handle, rotate this up a little bit just so it fits in kind of like the same as the other side with the flag. Bring it in a little bit here and we'll line that up a little bit more there. I'm going to hold down my shift key. I'll select both of these. I could go control page down, but I'll just go right click, order, and to back of page. There's my flag setup. And I'm going to bring this in just a little bit more. Next thing I'll do is add some of these flames here. So I'll go to my artistic media tool. I've already got my flame selected from my brush pack. I've got my styled color flame, select OK. If that doesn't come up for you, sometimes you'll see artistic. You want to change that to custom. What I do is click off, make sure I don't have anything selected. Now come down here and I'll grab a brush. And I think I'll go with this flame brush right here. Zoom in here. And I'll just left click, hold down, and then just come up here around and kind of flare out here at the top. And I've got that look there. And I'll bring this back down here. That kind of moved when the screen space moved. Come up here, I'll make that a little bit wider. Just slide up a little bit, change the size of that. Left click, hold down, and push forward. Something like that right about there. Now you can see we've got some damage in here, so go ahead and clean that up. I'll go over here to my pick tool and double click on the brush, and I can see I've got this node here. I'll just double click and remove that, and you see that gets fixed. I'll double click and delete this, and that gets fixed. Now we've got a nice smooth flame stroke, and we can pull this up into here a little bit, probably drop a node right there, and just flare this up a little bit like that. And I can take this, and the next thing I'll do is just go ahead and left click, hold down, right click one time, duplicate this. And I'll come over here to this handle on the left, I'll hold down control, and I'll be able to flip that perfectly. And then bring that over here and see how that looks. And if I want to make some adjustments to it, I can double click here and move this, say, up into here a little bit. A little bit of change for this side of the layout and pull this node right back in here so we cover all of that. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and break these apart. So I'll select this right click break artistic media group apart. I'll take this line and I'll hit the delete key. Do the same thing over here. Right click break artistic media group apart. Take this line that the brush was on and hit the delete key and delete that. Hold down shift and select both of these and then once again right click order to back of page so there's my basic layout for the racing design now let's say I want to start adding some halftone effects go ahead and create a rectangle here I'll make that kind of long so that I can work with it inside of the design I'm going to fill that with a black take the outline off go over here to my transparency tool and we'll make a transparency that comes right up to about there. Now with my settings here, I'll click on apply from pointalizer using the transparency and let that process. And sometimes it'll take a minute for the pointalizer to process the halftone effect. And I want to zoom in there and take a look at those. And I'm kind of happy with those. I might want to go with something bigger so I could bring my density down to say eight and then I'll come in here and hit Control Z, select this again, and hit Apply, and let that process. And I've got some bigger halftone dots because I moved my density to 8, and I'm happy with that. Go ahead and take that, and I can now rotate this, and I can just left click, it's not, excuse me, not left click, but right click, hold down, drag that over the racing, release that power clip inside. Now I've got a power clip. Come over here to Edit Power Clip, 
come in, in here and I can move this around, line it up, resize it, etc. And I could change that to say a yellow. And then I could do the same thing up here. Now I'll just go ahead and mirror both ways here, bring this in this way. Change that to a yellow. Then I'll come down here and I'll stop editing contents. And you can see that effect built in there. Next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and create a halftone effect that's going around the whole design. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and select everything here and I can come up here to create boundary. And that'll create that. Now fill that with a black. I'm going to give that an outline of say five millimeters, make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to come down here to my pen fill. I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to make my corners round and my end caps round. I'm going to go behind fill, scale with image if I want to, and select OK. And I'll take this and I'll go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap, 300 dpi, RGB, anti-alias, transparent background, very important. Select OK. And I'll come here to bitmaps, blur, because I want to keep my transparency. So I had that transparency, Gaussian blur. And I could come out quite a bit. I could come out to like 62, as you can see there, and I'll select OK. And then again, I'll come over here and click on Apply. And then I'll process that on that bitmap as opposed to that vector. Then I can take that right click, order to back of page. Now it's behind my design. I can fill it with, say, a gray, as you see there, and I've got that all set. Now, once I've got this design set up, if I want to, if I don't want this gray in the background, let's say I want some white in the background, I can go again with everything selected except for the halftones, and I'll hold down Shift to deselect those. I've got Control there. I want Shift. Here we go, seven objects. And create a boundary again up here in the Properties bar. Fill that with white. And I can right-click that, click Order, go to you can't see it but go to in front of and then click on the halftone design and you can see i'll have white here in the background and i've got that halftone effect now one thing about these halftone effects really what i would do is convert these to monochrome bitmaps because if i pull this out here left click hold down right click one time and duplicate and i ungroup all objects you can see i've got three objects here now, if I take that and I go to break curve apart, you can see I just, you know, 360 objects. I end up with a lot of objects. So there's a lot going on with halftones. But what I can do is I'll go ahead and delete these. I can take this and convert it to a monochrome bitmap, which will greatly reduce the file size, much easier for separations, etc. So I'll go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap. I'll change this to 600 dpi just so it's really clean. Don't want the end the aliasing, select OK. Now I'll go to bitmap, mode, black and white. Select OK. Now that doesn't look as good as vector, but it'll print just as good as vector. It's just the way the monochrome show in Corel. And then, you know, left click with a monochrome is your background color. Obviously we want that transparent, so I'll left click on the X and right click is your foreground color and there's the gray back. And I'd probably do the same thing inside of my power clip. We won't do that for the sake of the tutorial. Then I can go over here and I'll grab my, I'll hold down Shift and Alt so I get both of these objects. Grab my comp and I'll go ahead and resize that. Make that a little bit bigger. And I can just take this design and drop it right on my comp. Now it looks like the gray is behind the other one, so I'll just go ahead and group everything here. Now I'll bring that gray back up in front of the shirt. So just a quick tutorial on working with the Pointalizer Docker from Corel. There's some more things I'll get into the future relating to this because there are some other things you can do with it. But just something to work with for creating some nice halftone effects for our graphic design work and our t-shirt designs. Go ahead and wrap here and we'll see you in our next video.